Welcome, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about accessing remote systems using SSH. Now, first, I need you to make sure you have your primary linuxacademy.com lab server running, or whichever one you're using for your Red Hat 7 distribution. Next, I need you to go ahead and start a second one, because what we're going to do is we're going to connect from our first one over to our second one. So let's go ahead and make sure we're first connected to our, I'm going to call it my primary because I'm choosing to use Anthony one as my lab server. So I'm going to connect to it with the SSH user and then at IP address. Now this is stuff that we've learned inside of linuxacademy.com and inside of the introduction section of linuxacademy.com. So this part should pretty much be old hat to us. It should be relatively simple for us to do. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a few tips and tricks on connecting to remote systems, issuing commands on remote systems, and copying files to and from remote systems. So now that I have my second one set up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first set this as my primary, then I'm going to set this as my secondary, just for my own purpose here of labeling what our lab servers are. Then I'm going to go ahead and copy this IP address. Now, I'm not going to open up another terminal because instead I want to learn how to do a few tips and tricks. So first, let's start at the very basics of what we actually just did. Again, I'm going to connect to that from my primary server. I'm going to connect to my secondary one. And I'm going to do that just by issuing SSH user and then at the IP address yet again. So if you notice here, it asks for a password. What this is called is this is called password authentication. In order to connect to a remote machine, we can do it in multiple ways. Now, the default way is enabling password authentication. Now, password authentication allows us to manage passwords just like a regular text password. Now, this is usually encrypted if we're using SSH connections. So it's not being sent over the internet in plain text. However, what we can do is we can enable something called key authentication where we can securely sign and encrypt keys that essentially require a handshake from our client computer to our remote com computer in order to access. It's a, it's a much higher and more secure method of communicating with servers remotely. Now this is actually gonna be part of the Red Hat security section of this course, and we're not gonna cover keys here. Instead, we're gonna cover the basic concepts of SSH and transferring files with SSH. So we just connected to our remote system. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a few files using my touch command. I'm just gonna to do touch, file one, file two, file three, and then close our bracket. Now, before I continue on, I wanna talk about these squiggly brackets. These squiggly brackets allow us to create multiple files at one time with just issuing one command. I can remove files, I can touch files, I can make directories, and I can do multiple at one time by surrounding it inside of brackets. So if we now issue our ls command, we see that we have three files. Now that that is located on our system, I'm also going to go ahead and su into the root user. Once in is the root user, let's navigate into the etsy directory and then the ssh directory. I want to take a look at my sshd config file. Now the reason I want to do this is because there's something enabled on here called root authentication or permit root login. Now, by default, this is already commented out on most distributions. However, it is best practice to also leave it commented out. Now, what permit root login does is if enabled or uncommented, this hash in front of it means that basically the system is going to ignore this line of code or this line of configuration. This is a comment. The system doesn't recognize comments. Uncommented items the system recognizes. So if we were to uncomment permit root login, that means I could log in to the system remotely as the root user, instead of logging in as a different user and then changing into the root user. Now this is bad practice. It's considered a security hole. If somebody got access to your root password and they logged into the system, well, that could cause a lot of damage on your system. Instead, if you have multiple layers of security where first they must get your key or password to generic user account, and then they must have privileges to be promoted to the root user. So leaving this disabled is best practice, and it's already disabled on our system. If it's not disabled on your system, what you'll either do is comment this out, or you'll change this to no, and then once you change the configuration, you'll perform a system CTL restart on the SSHD service, and that'll apply that configuration change. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of the root user and then also exit out of my secondary system. That system we just SSH'd into. Now I'm back on my primary machine. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna issue a command to a remote server without actually connecting to that server. So how could I do that? Well, that's really simple. I could just do SSH my username and then we'll get my server IP address or server host name, whatever you wanna use and then the command. So I'm gonna issue the command ls. Since we don't have passwordless authentication set up using keys yet, I'm gonna to need to enter in my password in order for this to work. When the password is accepted, we're not gonna to connect to the system. Instead, it's gonna temporarily connect to the system, return our output of our command, which is just ls. Since we logged in as the user, it's gonna ls the user's home directory, which will be slash home slash user. And if you recall, inside of that home directory in our secondary server, we just set up by using the touch command, file one, file two, and file three. So we can issue commands remotely by doing this. So this is a really useful tool, especially if you need to execute a script remotely without connecting to it. So now that we've done that, what I wanna do is I wanna create a file or take one of our files that we've already created here, and I wanna copy it up to my home slash user directory on the remote system. Well, I can use a tool called SCP. SCP is a secure file transfer protocol or tool that uses port 22. Port 22 is the SSH port and is an encrypted port. So data that is sent over port 22 is encrypted and is not in plain text. Now, if you're not familiar with this, if you were to use, for example, an FTP program or Telnet in order to do these types of communications, you would be using plain text tunnels to your remote server instead of encrypted tunnels. And this is bad because a hacker could eavesdrop in between these connections, basically a middleman attack, to listen to what's being sent to and from your remote servers. That's a security hole. So if you're connecting as a remote user, your password is being transferred if you're using Telnet or F FTP over plain text. Instead, we have SCP SSH and SFTP secure file transfer protocol, which we use over port 22. And that's what we're learning about here. So we have SCP. And then what I'm going to do is what file I want to transfer. Well, I just created this log file. So we're going to transfer the last 10 lines.txt. I'm going to transfer it to using the user, user at then our host name. So these are my credentials to communicate with my remote server. And then when I do SCP, I have to specify the location in which I want to put this file. So I'm actually just going to specify my user's home directory. I could specify a subdirectory for my user's home directory by doing my dir1. If my dir1 existed inside of slash home slash user on the remote system. So instead, I'm just going to upload it to the user's home directory, which in this case, since the user is username user, will be slash home slash user on the remote system. So we have our SCP command, the file we want to transfer, the credentials to the server we want to communicate with, and then the location that we're uploading the file to. And then we'll hit enter. We'll enter in the password for the remote user. It's going to say it works successfully. I don't believe it, so let's go ahead and just issue a command on the remote server and see. We'll do ssh user at, we'll paste in our IP address, and then we'll issue the command ls, type in our password, and we should see now on the remote server, because we issued this command on the remote server, we now see last 10 lines.txt. Okay, so I want to download file one, file two, and file three. I could choose to do it with SCP by doing it the other way around, or I could just SFTP to my remote server. So SFTP is using port 22 instead of the regular FTP port. Now this is important because SFTP implies secure file transfer. The files and data sent over SFTP are encrypted information. It's using the SSH port. So we're using it to communicate with remote systems. So we'll do SFTP user at the IP address we want to communicate with. Now, in this case, again, we're connecting as the user user, then the IP address. If it was a different username, you would replace user user with that different username. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to it. 
And now we're inside of our remote system. I can do an ls, and inside of here, I, res I see the files inside of my remote system. Now I can generally issue regular Linux commands inside of SFTP. So by typing pwd, I see that I'm working inside the remote directory slash home slash user. I can navigate into the desktop directory if I wanted and do an ls or navigate back out of the desktop directory. Now I want to go ahead and download file one. So I can just type git file one. And that's going to download it to my local machine. I can git file two. That'll download it to my local machine. Now, if I have permissions to do this inside of the directory, I should be able to do a make dir test. And if I do an ls on our remote machine, you see that we now have a directory called test. Now, the other side of that is I can also upload files from my current working directory. So if we come back up here, when we started the SFTP directory, I was inside of my user's home directory on my primary server. So that means these files here are inside of my directory. So I can type put bad command.txt, and I did tab completion there. So I just started typing and then hit tab and it completed it for me. So again, if you're not familiar with that, I'll just type bad and then hit tab and it'll complete it for me since I'm inside of that directory. And I'm just gonna put that on side of the remote machine. So now on the remote machine, we see that we have bad command.txt. So I can quit by either typing quit, exit, or buy. And then now we're back on our local machine. On our local machine, we now have file one and file two, whereas we downloaded those via SFTP. If I were to issue a command on my remote machine, I'm gonna search my history to find that command. So to search that, I'm gonna hit control R and then SSH. And then if you notice, it completes it for me. So we're actually searching the history on our system by hitting control R. It's our command history. So since this command will issue the remote LS command on our remote system, I'm gonna go ahead and issue that command by hitting enter, entering in my password. And then we see that bad command.txt is there because we uploaded it with the SFTP program. So that concludes it for this lesson. In this lesson, we learn how to connect to remote machines using SSH. We also learn to use the SSH protocol in port 22 in order to use secure file transfer, the SCP program, as well as SFTP. It is an exam requirement for us to be able to transfer files to and from different machines securely, and these two programs satisfy that exam requirement. So that concludes it for this lesson. Go ahead and complete this lesson.